live. I've had this song in my head because I knew we were going to do the show today, the Cobra Kai show, and I've been singing it while I was while I was waiting for dinner, and I was walking around the house running errands, and I was like, "Cause you're the best around. No one's ever ever going to break you down because you're the best." And then you know when you got a song that you like, it actually brings positive memories to Absolutely. to one's feeling of life. And we need that right now. We need any kind of positive, anything, anywhere you can drive, derive positivity, do it. So that song was giving me kind of a good feeling, like a triumphant, like feeling of victory and happiness. So I had to go pull it up on YouTube and I pulled up a YouTube instead of pulling up the original, like one of the original cuts of it. I found one that had some footage from season one of Cobra Kai with the tournament and had that song <clears throat> uh, edited really well into some clips from the tournament. And I, so it was a nice little flashback of a 80s karate kid song with an earlier season of cobra kai blended together it was a lot of fun oh that's awesome You're the best that, around no one's ever, ever gonna break you down anyway that, i'm very, very excited yeah that is that is a great song that is a it great is a, song. i love that song it is a great song and that there's a lot of great music that come out of karate kid rocky movies um, they did a good job on, I mean, a great job on the soundtracks for those two movies. They provided a lot of the, the, the oh, best, yeah. best movie scores of, of that decade. So sitting next to me virtually in a remote kind of zoom sort of way from his home in Louisiana, the one and only master Jedi, <laughs> Matt Wilkins, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. <laughs> Master Jedi Matt Wilkins is joining me, and I've got some applause for you that we'll uh, we'll find for you here, doing everything live now with the sound. So it's a That's lot right. easier than just editing it in. But I got some beautiful applause for you. That's the same thing I hear every time I turn on the camera. <laughs> every time it just automatically just it just it's there for you. It's there. <laughs> you gotta love it. You gotta love it. We got a fun. We okay. We got a fun one. And we need a fun one today. There's been a lot of not so fun things going on in the world. But I got a fun one for you, me and Matt. We're going to talk reactions. And we needed this to bring in the new year. Cobra Kai, season oh. three. Oh, man. Yeah, now on Netflix. So that's coming up on Thunder Pop. Okay, now. Yeah, Cobra Kai, season three. Already season three and first uh, officially the first new season to, to run on Netflix since it moved to Netflix. Um, same cast, same hijinks. We, we, we should mention, though, this was done through the studio uh, with YouTube Red, but Netflix didn't. Yeah. Netflix bought it completed. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's something a lot of people um, I didn't even think about a lot until, you know, kind of off and on. But. Yeah. yeah, this was done under the YouTube umbrella, but they bought it outright. Kind of like yeah. what's going to happen in March with Coming to America. It wasn't produced by Amazon Prime or Coming to to America, literally. Two. It wasn't produced. Yeah, two. Yeah, put the two there. It wasn't produced by Prime. Prime bought it um, yeah. from Paramount outright. It's just like yeah. they, the, so. But going forward, season four will be the first season produced by Netflix Studio. <laughs> Don't ruin it, Netflix. Get some of that Netflix money. We'll get some of the Netflix money, which is good. And I, I saw I thought they there was a little bit more of a budget on season three than what we had saw in season one and season two. There were some things in there that I don't know if we would have seen in, in the first two seasons that indicated maybe there was a little bit bigger budget for this for this season. So that that's something we can talk about. Definitely. And uh, I've, I've got some show notes, but we're gonna do our usual tropes. Thunder take, uh, agree or disagree. We're gonna talk, of course, Cobra Kai and um you know, people need some, you know, escapism can be kind of a dirty word sometimes, but, you know, we do need some escapism, and that's what we do here. There are people out there that can do a better job with tackling the problems of the world and, and dissecting those situations and telling you what we need to do or what we don't need to do and can debate it and all that stuff. But we're going to be the movie guys, the TV guys. We do that. Matt, of course, also book and, and board games. It's all things entertainment. Telling uh, you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna dive into all that. It'll be all right. It'll be all right, all right. You know, just like Matthew McConaughey has always said. 
All right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to get into that. So we'll do that, and we'll roll in our opening right now. Okay, I lied. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. Here we are, world. It's 2021, by the way. And we were treated early it went one week early this show was not even supposed to come out until today and they gave it to us a week early thank you very much netflix for that treat and cobra kai the production team and crew and everyone that brings together cobra cobra kai i was gonna say cobra fly but cobra kai and giving us that a little early i was telling matt before we started we were kind of chit-chatting a little bit about various things and i said you know my son has three and a half now and he's getting a little more brazen. And I said, you know, uh, I don't have a lock on the door here at the studio. So I never needed one. Uh, it's a room in the house. I call it a studio, but room in the house. But basically that I converted into a studio. So right. didn't need a lock on the door for, for any particular reason ever. But now we have to put a latch because he does want to come in here and explore things. And there are things, you know, that I don't want necessarily a three and a half year old to have access to without my supervision. So... Mm -hmm. I put a latch on the door, but it leaves the door cracked. And then, so what he does now is he gets up. He's supposed to be in bed right now. And he's like outside my door, like looking through the crack of the door. And he's like, <laughs> he's, he's mumbling to me and stuff. And he's messing with me. So anyway, I got a little sidekick. You can't see him. He's off camera. And so the other option would be to leave the door closed, but unlocked. You know, so I wouldn't let the, so the sound couldn't get in, but then he's going to, he will barge in. And right. He'll be barging in and be causing kind of all kinds of, of uh, three and a half year old shenanigans. So, I, I might just have to let him start co-hosting. That's right. Hey, 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 Dad. He's got to get his time. Yeah, he's, fifteen he's minutes. Ready. He's got to have it now. The cute thing, though, one thing that did happen. I was doing an Instagram live, and I was like, I'm going to go ahead and let him come on. If he wants to come on, he come on with me. Just let him come in. And yeah. so his, his mom told him that, and he was like, Wait, 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 wait. I got to go get my microphone. He's got a little toy microphone. He was running around looking for his microphone. He wouldn't come in until he got his, his microphone. He couldn't find his microphone. So it was too late. By the time I was I was done, and uh, he didn't make it out here with me to do. So next time, I've got to get his mic and have it on standby. Okay. Cobra Kai, you know what I'm going through because you've got, you've got small little ones. Yep. I got uh, two twin, two mm -hmm. twin girls. Yeah. By the way, it, he's, he's the world to me, and I love him. And yes. Three and a half year olds or three and a half year olds, but they're, they're he's also like one of the best things that's ever happened to me. So there's that. And I can't wait to show him the karate kid. Speaking of the Cobra Kai, can't wait to show him karate kid. Probably when he's five or six years old, a little bit older. He's still, you know, on the PJ Mass, Paw Patrol, things like that. Understood. But, yeah. Understood. He, We're we have Wiggles and Yo Gabba Gabba playing on our Yeah, TV. you told me. Yo Gabba Gabba, I you know I've seen that before. Where where does Yo Gabba Gabba show at? I I don't know. It's on YouTube is where we're looking okay. at it. But they're just old episodes of a children's TV show where they all dress up as these weird creatures, come to life, sing, dance. Oh, okay. And then go back into a box and get carried away. Just like adults have so much to watch nowadays, like content wise, there's so much for kids to watch nowadays. There wasn't around like when we were when I was a kid. It was like Sesame Street. And then, like, there were three other options, and yep. then that was that Sesame was Street. And then you had anything on uh, uh, public uh, yeah. public television, PBS. Yeah, mm -hmm. PBS. Yeah. You had things like uh, Reading Rainbow. Yeah, uh, three, two, one, contact, P mm -hmm. uh, pinwheel. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Great yeah, shows, it, man. <laughs> yeah, I know they have the PBS app. 
kids app. I think that you can, they have a lot of that stuff on there as well. So yeah, there's some great shows. PBS was pretty good. And still, still has some of those good shows. Uh, then you get older and then it's Bob Ross. If you're a PBS person, your you get, PBS host, you would get into the Bob Ross. You move from Mr. Rogers to maybe Bob Ross and whatever else comes in after that. <clears throat> oh man. So great, great stuff. PBS. Okay. Another thing that we love, or I think we still love, I haven't heard Matt's thoughts on, on season three. So uh -oh. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on season three. I could speak That's for right. myself. We haven't about it yet. This will be our first time talking about it. This is the first time I'm talking about it. Cause I text you said, you watched it, right? We're going to do a show. And you said, you bet. And I said, but I didn't ask you what you thought. Cause I kind of wanted to save it. Yeah. And you know, I know you loved, you love, okay. Needless to say, huge fan of the karate kid. And you were ecstatic about the first season. Love the second season. And now season three. Well, I'm anxious to hear what you thought about this season three of Cobra Kai. I loved it. You go first. Okay. Oh, you loved it. go first. I loved yeah, it. First. I loved it. I love, I like we we've talked about this before. I think for the first two seasons, uh, first season, of course, I think took everyone by surprise on how good it was. And that's the thing that people don't understand is we were watching it back when it was on YouTube red. Yeah. And now everyone is just rediscovering it for the first time through Netflix. Mm -hmm. I have so many friends who have come up to me and gone, you kept telling me to, to watch Cobra Kai. I finally saw it. Yeah. Cause it's on Netflix now. Yeah. And so it's opened itself up to a bigger, a wider audience and it is huge. It is huge. It's just blowing up everywhere. People are loving it. And they say, yeah. Oh, I can wait for, you know, season three. I was like, well, I've been waiting for like over a year now. <laughs> yeah. We had to wait. Yeah, they didn't have to wait. So the people that found it just as it was hitting Netflix. And yeah, its audience has grown substantially. It's now kind of in that, that I would say, the top tier TV. Oh, yeah. Shows. It's where up there with Mandalorian. Um, I heard it beat it in streams, though. I don't know how you would find that out. Oh, well, like, yeah, because they're both on two different streaming platforms. And traditionally, Netflix and I think Disney Plus don't really reveal their numbers yeah. usually. So usually. I don't know how I heard someone tell me that. And I was like, well, how would you know that? Now do I do you know dreams. And I do have a question for you about which one of the Netflix stars, not of Cobra Kai, but he has, he actually did meet the Cobra Kai cast, but he's done movies for Netflix. And he uh, gave us some ideas of what the range and numbers are for a popular. Um, well, I'll tell you, he suggested that a brand made for made for Netflix movie that's popular uh, could get 59, 59 million views. Wow. That's for a movie. So wow. I would think Cobra Kai. So we're talking about like a, uh, we're talking about David Spade, by the way. So David Spade said, yeah, I do a new movie for Netflix. And he suggested 59 million views. Wow. So you would think an Adam Sandler movie, Adam Sandler makes original content for Netflix, like yeah. in terms of movies. Uh, now Eddie Murphy's made made an original movie for Netflix, so that's what you're kind of looking at from his, you know, he kind of. And I don't know if he was supposed to say that, but that's what he's he suggested. Still, that's really awesome. That's really awesome. I didn't yeah. I didn't know about that, but I mean, yeah, it's it's it's, it's become bigger and bigger. Uh, and now season three, of course, everyone was waiting for this. They moved it up a week, like you said earlier, and we got to watch it and. It was really good. Now I had a few complaints from a few people, and one of them was, you know, hey, the series start off slow. What are they? Because one of my friends thought, well, I thought Netflix would pour more money into the show. I said, no, no, no. This was a YouTube show. Yeah, that was completed, and they bought it. So, yeah, you do see a lot of sitting down talking scenes, but that's because they were saving up for big action scenes. They were saving up for the uh, yeah. Okinawa, you know, yeah. scene and stuff like that, and all the stuff that they did, and. The other thing that's in there a lot more we see this season was product placement, which doesn't bother me at all. I actually like product placement because it makes you feel like you're in the real world. Sure. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of times it always irks me that everyone's wearing plain T-shirts. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the world doesn't work like that. Not everyone's wearing a plain T-shirt. Yeah. Or you have uh, people who are, you know, drinking a drinking a cola, but it's turned to the side always or yeah. whatever, you know, it's, it's all, or it's generic or whatnot. You're like, what? It, it, yeah. Yeah. Like that. Or the Coke machine says yeah. cola on it. Like, yeah. 
nothing does anymore. So yeah. here they are. And what are they drinking? They're drinking RC Cola. <laughs> yes. Of all the sponsors. I don't know. I would love to. That's what I want to know. I want to know why they decide on RC. I mean, I love personally RC Cola is my favorite. I know. I wasn't sure they still made it, but I loved it when I was a kid. Yeah. I used to get I, that all the time. I think Pepsi owns it now okay. Okay. and they distribute it, but they still kept the formula the same as far as I know. And I, I drink RC Cola today. And uh, that's that's one of the unique drinks I will have in my fridge. Whenever someone opens up my fridge, they go, well, RC Cola. And, the, you know, those are the first to go. I'll have Dr. Pepper in there, too. But they always want to try something new and unique. And um, yeah. so I was like, oh, wow, they're going to make RC Cola cool again. Wow. <laughs> or maybe that's the only thing they could afford. I don't know how how that goes. But you could you could tell throughout the series they had what Toyota and other other little brands in there and that was fine that didn't bother me at all do whatever you can to grab that extra money to pay for your show i'm totally for that yeah no absolutely i did get one on uh the chat and we'll hit if we get any more we'll hit it at the end of the show but this one actually is telling me tester says that our stream won't open up on youtube it's getting pixelated video we'll send you a screenshot okay thank you for doing that uh if, if you um want to go over we're on twitter also uh we're at if you're watching, trying to watch us on YouTube and you're having some issues, um, still navigate my way around the world of live streaming. And, and maybe we have to do something new, like here with the hardware at the house to make sure we don't have any issues. But even like the big shows, like I'm watching, I've watched um, John Campia and they're having, you know, pixelation sometimes in their video in the middle of a show. Um, but the recorded version that's here in the stream yard always usually looks pretty good and it looks perfect right now. So if I go back and watch the YouTube later and it's 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 funky, I'll I'll just pull it down and I'll I'll download this version and I'll throw it in and replace it. So when you watch a re the re air of it, I guess is what you could call it. Uh, it'll be nice and pretty like the one we're looking at right now. But in the meantime, go check it out. We're also on Twitter and see if it's maybe a better feed. And we're also on Facebook and it's usually at, at Thunderpop TV at Twitter. It's at Thunderpop TV. OK. Back into the Cobra Kai. So yeah, yeah, the RC really like for me caught me off guard. That was out of the out of the blue, but yeah, there's some product placement there. Um, and for the people that were asking about Netflix, wondering why the budget wasn't maybe didn't seem ramped up. I thought it was actually bigger budget than what we had saw in season one, especially. I mean, taking Danielson to Okinawa in itself, and I don't know if he was actually in Okinawa. I mean, originally even, even the, what's that? Either way, it felt like it was a bigger production, too. And yeah. it felt, felt like they used their money well. As you know, you can only use um, X. You can allocate X amount for each show, but you can also wait the shows like sandbag some of that money for a big show. Smallville did this all the time, right? You got boring show, shows. So they can have this big season finale, you know, with CGI and everything they needed, but they had to make everything balance out. So it's a it's a it's a checks and balances like any TV show is. And so the first couple episodes, maybe moved, they were kind of setting things up again. The only sure. thing, yeah. and, I, and I understand, I also understand why they did it. Um, what's it called? Storyline wise, because on season two, we just had a breakdown, you know, just all out fight, which was great. That school yeah, fight was great. Area. And so we have to breathe after that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so that's what they did a little bit. They brought back um, Bobby, was it? Um, for a few episodes. We're doing spoilers here, right? Oh yeah. And by the way, and I put that in the, uh, in, just, our, in our text I about that before I said some, yeah, but beyond this point, if you haven't watched Cobra Kai season three and you care, it's coming, there will be, there will be, there'll be tons of spoilers. We're going to drop the spoilers. We waited, we waited a, almost a week, right? We waited about a week. Yeah. 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 It's come on. Days. Days. You should have yeah. watched it by now. Yeah, it's past the time. Uh, we're gonna roll out spoilers past this point. So now, you have been warned. Spoilers past time. this point. Get yeah, ready. Time for spoilers spoilers are coming now. Spoiler time. Spoiler time. Okay. Oh yeah. Now it's safe. You go for it. My wife just checked the feed. She said it looks great. Okay. Good. Well, yeah. And Brody, uh, well, Tester. Uh, so he's on he's on uh, Facebook now and he's in the house. Good. All right. So, yeah, so getting into it, we, we get we get some uh, we get some new. There's a lot actually. 
there's, there's a lot of there's a lot we here. didn't see yeah a lot of new people a lot, there is a lot to unpack here there's a lot of new people that we had speculated about yeah and we got a lot of them back we did in different places kind of sprinkled around season three uh that we had been waiting for uh one especially that we've been talking about for uh, every cobra kai one yeah centric episode we've been talking about since season one and they've been kind of teasing it uh i'm gonna go ahead and just say it go ahead the one and only elizabeth shoe oh and Allie right. herself aka ali soccer player getting her stereo busted on the beach and smacking yeah. johnny in the face Allie back great stuff back as it and yeah and here's the thing this is kind of interesting this is my deal i saw i had just seen elizabeth shoe and i had not seen her in a while on, on anything like as far as shows or whatnot i knew she was still around because i had seen her bio kind of somewhat stalking her online yeah. and i'd seen her bio so i knew she was still around and then i i had you know we're we're home it's covid so i'm looking for shows to watch before cobra kai started and after mandalorian mandalorian finished I went over and, and watched the boys and binge mm -hmm. that towards the end of the year. And you know, Elizabeth shoe on the boys. Very good on there, by the way. She's a, she's, she, and then I also saw her in the Tom Hanks movie, the war movie. She has oh. a very, just a small part of that movie, but she's in that. It was, it went straight to Apple TV. The name of it is at the tip of my tongue, but she plays Tom Hanks's uh, girlfriend or wife. And she's in a couple of scenes there. Oh wow! I didn't I didn't know about that movie. I'd, I'd watched The Boys, and it was kind of unsettling now because I'm so used to seeing yeah. her as a mean, evil character. Yeah, well, she did so good as a mean, evil character on that she show. Great. Right. Still, I mean, she almost steals the show for the first season. So she comes out. She's great in there, and I'm like, she's got some acting chops. She's not just Ali for Karate Kid. And but here's the thing: I was worried that it was going to affect because I knew she was. I knew she was still coming back. I was like, she's right. still coming back. They've been teasing it for too long. She's coming back. And so when she came back, I was worried that it was going to kind of taint my perception of her because that, you know, I had just seen her on the boys. But you know what? Her acting was strong enough to where she, she, she portrayed a different person so well that, I mean, I saw Allie. I didn't see the boys' character when I watched her on, on Cobra Kai. I don't know about you, but I, I she transformed for me. I mean, I mean, I'm yeah, and I'm glad she did. Did you hear the story about how she got into that on Cobra Kai or on the boys on to Cobra Kai? Well, I saw and I watched the after. Did you watch the after party on Netflix? With no, the, I haven't seen it yet. This may have been the same thing. You go ahead. Well, she had didn't the, the, she was on the after party and she's actually there in studio with uh, Miguel Exolo, uh, I think uh, pronounce his first name. And uh, a couple of the other um, Danielson's daughter and then Robbie are in the studio and, and then William Zabka and uh, Ralph Macchio are coming in via Zoom and she's in the studio. Uh, and she said, well, first of all, I read this and I think this is where you're going. I read that she was not a sure bet. And even as they started filming season three, she was not a sure bet that, that she was going to be back. And they had prepared a scenario to explain if she doesn't come back. And the scenario was going to be that that message or that Facebook uh, accepting um, yeah, on the end. That, that, that Johnny gets, they were going to explain that it was, it would have been her husband that was you, that was on her Facebook that accepted Johnny as a friend and started messaging him. Oh, wild. And, and that was how they were going to write it and write around and explain it if they didn't get her back. Now, she said on the um, after party that she's always wanted to come back since since, since season one. So yeah. I don't know what the holdup was if she uh, wanted to do the show and was on board for doing the show. And she also said this, and I don't know if she was joking. I wish she'd go. When you get time, go back and watch the after party with David Spade on Netflix where he's interviewing the cast. But. And it's a new, it's a new show. It's going to be ongoing now. They're going to yeah. be doing more after parties with other with other shows. So they had. She said that she had wanted to come back where she had a dojo herself. And I don't know if she was joking or if she was serious, but she alluded to the fact that that was part of the negotiating was trying to get the character and the story where she wanted it. 
I don't know if she was joking because it was hard to tell at the time whether yeah. but I know that William Zabka and Ralph Macchio, if you watch them in the background, they don't laugh when she says that. They have a straight face. So that's also pretty interesting. <laughs> also, they're on Zoom, so maybe they weren't getting everything like in real time. I don't they, know. They, they might not have, but either way, I know I know that it, it seems like we're done with Allie now. It seems like she's moved on. She's in the last two episodes. She yeah. does her part. Yeah. It's time to move on. It's fine. I'm happy with what we got. I think we didn't get her earlier because of her um, scheduling. You yeah. know, she was working on the boys, and well, she I think was, that, that probably was part of why we, why they weren't sure whether they were going to get her was because of her scheduling. Yeah, I heard a story where the director of one of the the boys episodes asked her if she was going to be on Cobra Kai, and she went, "Well, I mean, yeah, we haven't talked yet, but she said that'd be interesting." He said, "Oh, you got to do it." He said, "You got to do it." He yeah. said, I, "I loved you in Karate Kid. You've got to do this." Uh, TV show. It's incredible. So she's like, she was impressed that people still, after years, you know, uh, they still remember her as Abby. Yeah. You know what's funny is I would have bet that any production she's working on, we're like, we'll give you whatever days, we'll, we'll, we'll shuffle the schedule around if you need to go shoot Cobra Kai for a few days. I know. We're not going to deprive, you know, we're not going to pull a like what happened to almost happened to Martin Cove where he had trouble getting out of. I think it was Cagney Lacey. He was committed to Cagney Lacey, and that's why he was having trouble uh, scheduling for Karate Kid Three. And oh, really? He was doing the series at the time, and he was having trouble. So that's why they wrote in, which is very interesting that they wrote in the uh, the uh, the Silver and Bad Boy oh, character I so that he that. wouldn't have to be in as many scenes. I did not know that. Yeah. So that's why Silver got in. Speaking, well, of, speaking of, yeah. So, and and the thing is, is uh, Martin Cove wanted to do Karate Kid three, but they had they had told him and said, "Look, he, he said I don't want to be just a cameo. Yeah. I don't want to just be a throwaway." And he said, "No, this is going to be your vehicle. Yeah, Karate Kid three, you're the central villain." And then he had trouble getting out of his series, so he had they had to work it out, and that's when they added in. And yeah, speaking of that, Terry Silver all over this uh, season in the flashback scenes. And we got some great, you know, great stuff with him and flashback scenes though, not the original actor. And it, it's nope. we, more backstory. Nope. This, this is the uh, Vietnam history. days that we hear yeah. about in Karate Kid 3. I love, I, I've always loved this. There he is. Yeah. By the way, that's a fan that made a doll of him, of his character. Oh, wow. That's a real fan there. That is a real fan to be doing Cry Kid three stuff. Here's the oh, real, real actor. Yeah. By the way. And um, Thomas Ian Griffith. Is he played. still doing stuff? You know, I, I've been I've been researching him this week. So he he's not acting too much lately. He did do a lot of acting after Karate Kid three. Karate Kid three was his first movie. He moves out to Hollywood. He gets Karate Kid three almost right away. Shut up. Because he was just perfect for the role. Now. He, he ends up doing soap opera for a long time. He's on another world. And that's mm -hmm. where he met his future wife was on another world. And they're oh. still together to this day. They've been together for a number of years, but that was his love interest on another world. In fact, you see the, the mullet version of him here. Yeah. That's him. That's his uh, character on another world. And um, this is what he looks like today. Okay. Kind of more what, he, more what he would look like if he comes out, which I know he's coming back. I mean, he's coming back. We'll talk about that, but. Yeah, that's what he would look like more than likely now if he comes back on the show. Although cool. now he, he was on one of the recent reunions mm -hmm. of the cast. Briefly, they they showed him and he's got a longer hair and a beard. Uh, so he looks a little actually a little bit different from that photo. So but he's, doing, he's doing mostly writing now and production. In fact, he was, a, a I think, a producer on the show Grimm. OK, for for quite a while. He also, as as an actor, some of the last things he appeared on was a show Cold Case, and he was on three or four other TV shows where he had, like TV network TV do, shows. Do some guest star appearances here. Yeah, and there. He, he had been some guests. But after Karate Kid, he ended up in a string of of uh, B lit B movie uh, martial art movies. Oh, so he really knows martial arts too. He must, yeah, because he's been he's been using a lot of martial art movies after Karate Kid. Here's something that nobody's talking about. Because everybody talked about Terry Silver. Everybody talked about um, uh, Chosen coming back, which, by the yeah. way, Chosen came back. And I, I thought that was brilliant how they brought him back. And it was done so well. Um, yeah. 
Chosen and Kuniko were done very well. Any of those yeah. characters that they brought back, the whole storyline was great because we, he goes out to Okinawa to kind of save his um, car dealership because they're losing the rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then he finds something. He goes on a complete different journey and basically gets to, we get to see a little bit of Miss Miyagi in a yeah. way, which I thought, you know, this it's read through a letter, but you can, you can hear Mr. Miyagi, whoever wrote that, letter did a great job they did a they did. great job because it sounded like mr miyagi talking you could hear mr miyagi and then um I, I i almost made the joke we were watching it together uh, a friend of mine and my wife and i went hey guys do you remember when he went out there to save his car company like i was like this is not going to tie in but it does at the end it does and it's great how it works it's great how it works they tied it in so well and that's that's the thing. I wouldn't have been crazy. Oh, well. I wouldn't have been crazy about them coming back if it had just been a, a random cameo that didn't really have any move the plot, but they figured out yeah. a way to use the characters to where it was more than just a cameo and it moved the plot along really well. Yes. And they, they just the way they tied in him going back to Okinawa, just again, it was very Cobra Kai. It was very clever and there was a lot of clever things with Okinawa. My my buddy who watched it with me. Those two episodes are his favorite episodes in yeah. the in, in the series, and probably some of the better ones in the show as a, as a whole. He really yeah. loved because he yeah. grew up he watching did. Karate Kid one and two back to back to back, mm -hmm. and those are really the only two he ever watched. And he he said he always loved two as much as one. I was like, really? Mm -hmm. So to have those characters come back was just just phenomenal and they 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 played their roles well here's what no one's talking about also from karate kid three and karate kid three's fingerprints are going to be all over season four i agree with that if if karate kid two made a heavy showing in season three karate kid three will make a heavy showing in season four but no one's been talking about this actress Wow, I three. could not remember her name. Robin Lively, if I'm not mistaken. And she still acts now, too, very actively, by the way. She was on the Hawaiian Five. She's done, again, she's done a lot of television stuff. She was on Hawaii Five O, the TV, the newer Hawaii Five O. Uh, she was on, um, she's been on a, a, a handful of shows. Oh, she was uh, on The Rookie recently. Okay, and, and for people who don't know who that is in the Karate Kid universe, mm -hmm. she was in Karate Kid 3. She's Daniel's love interest. And yeah. I, had, I had mentioned this after it was over because we talked about, well, who else could come back? Yeah. And I said, well, but, you know, they could bring that redheaded girl back. I couldn't think of her name. Yeah. But then I thought, why? Kuniko, I could totally understand and chose on because they were, you know, he went over there. He had to kind of retouch up. She, if we remember right in Karate Kid 3, oh, that's a... Mm, I got too many. Hold on. Let me, let me, let, let me park a lot. That one. Okay. Uh, okay. I love how they explain how Allie and Daniel really broke up. Yes. It basically changes your perspective on the beginning of uh, two karate okay. gets two, and that, because it always bothered me that why would Allie who's, you know, always true, always good. Why would she just up and dump uh, Daniel for a yeah. football star? I was like, yeah. that does, that's not her character. And I bet they heard a lot of fans complain about that. So they retconned it by saying, no, she was talking to an old friend and Daniel got really jealous. So she basically egged him on and, and then he ended it. Yeah. And then was complaining to Miyagi about what was going on. And, it's, and it, it, it makes it sense. Like they're kind of clever way. Yeah. And they but, found a clever way to use that in the this season's plot. Yeah. To move along the characters relationships with each other. Exactly. Exactly. And it was, it, it was great. Now with three, she leaves Daniel at the end. She actually leaves yeah. him for her old boyfriend. So is that what, is that what it was? That was, yeah. I, th I think, I think she says, you know, cause they, they decide not to become romantically yeah. entangled. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it's odd because that's the first time that he has a romantic interest that they don't get romantic. Well, and that was always a technical, that was a logistics thing too, because that actress was underage when they filmed the movie. Oh, and I so didn't they, know that. They could not have any kissing scenes because obviously Ralph Macchio was in his mid to late twenties by then. Yeah, by that time, you know, I mean, he's fifty nine. He's almost fifty nine now. 
Yeah. Uh, again, playing younger than his age, as he's always I been. didn't know that. So she was a 15, 16. Somewhere in, I think, 16 range. But, yeah, she was younger. I, I don't know why you cast her with that issue and then have to write around that. Uh, I guess because they're supposed to be still in high school together. Yeah. They cast a high school girl to go well with him. I get that. But you could have cast an 18-year-old. And, or, you know, there's there's other actresses that would have been in their 20s, I'm sure, that like Ralph Macchio. Yeah. That would have looked oh, younger. yeah. There's a lot oh, of those people. And so that's an odd casting. Decision. So that's the reason why. But they yeah. never got together. And so I was like, okay, well, they were friends. They never got together. What I, We know why at, uh, why Allie should be there. We know why Kuniko should be there. Yeah. I can't remember that red-haired girl's name in the in the movie. The character she played, I'll have to look it up. But yeah, yeah. she she was uh yeah, so she was in Karate Kid Three. You know, they could bring her now. That would be one there oh, where maybe I, 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 mean, I wouldn't mind that. But I'm thinking, why would you do it? I'm thinking like story wise, she doesn't improve the plot any, as far as we know. I mean, yes, yeah, she could be connected to someone or do something or, I mean, and, and it's nice. I mean, they're bringing everyone back, so why not? My, I really hope, and by the way, while you're looking that up, I really hope that Jessica her, Andrews, her name was Jessica. Okay. Yeah. It's her I, real I really name is Robin Lively. If Terry Silver is coming back, he's back for the whole season because John oh, yeah. Reese needs a henchman so that uh, uh, the thing is, I think it's going to be because you can't have, I mean, you had both of them team up against John Kreese. It's yeah. going to be Johnny and John Kreese at the end. You know, it is. Yeah. They're the ones. So who does Daniel fight? Daniel fights Silver. Yeah. Because he needs to get, because, you know, he never fought Silver. Silver put him through pain. And maybe this is Daniel's turn, Dan, Daniel's turn to go after him. And I like this idea. By the um, way, did he come back having now owned a hot tub business in 2020? He had that scene, of course, in Credit Kid 3 where he's in the hot tub. I know. It's which so is, over the top. It's so great. It's great, which is also kind of a nod to uh, before it even happened to William Zapka's appearance in Hot Tub Time Machine. That's funny. But hey, but the thing is, I hope Silver's in it the whole season long. And to be honest, for just one episode, we we, we heard a rumor. Actually, actually, when season one posted, they got the actor to uh, the um, who the kid, the bad boy, Mike, yeah. whatever. He said he was approached by the creators. Yeah. To he's, be been, a part of he's been everywhere on YouTube talking so, about coming, wanting to come back. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming, I mean, why wouldn't they give him a shot back? So they, uh, if they give him a shot back, I think he's just a one and done guy, but I think they should keep Terry silver in there so that Daniel will have someone. It'll wrap up his storyline. In fact, I love when he took his daughter uh, Daniel took his daughter to the gym and she goes, this is the spot. She went, I know where you beat Johnny dad. He went, no, where I almost lost to fear. And then it, it shows three yeah. and it you're like, like, shut up. up. After yeah. it was all over, we were just, just giddy with excitement that three is a such three is basically cheese folks. If you've never seen it before, there's a reason it's over the top. It's, you know, I mean, it's, it's, that doesn't surprise me. It was that actor Terry Silver's first movie role because he is over the top, cartoony villain. But there's it has a special place in my heart because I loved it when it came out. When I was a kid, I saw it. I thought it was I thought it was almost better than one. For some thinking, people, for some people, he's the favorite villain of the Karate Kid series. I know oh, some really. People, I've read online there's a lot of people that still like his. I, I mean, it's hard I, to be priest, but I think Karate Kid Three is the weakest of the three. Because yeah, exactly. it's so over the top. Yeah. However, I love it personally. Personally, yeah. I absolutely love it for that reason. And I, that I they're think, including it so much. I think it aged well. well. I think it, it it kind of is one of those movies that got better with time. And I also think it found an audience through time. Because when we, I remember when my brother first, when we, went and saw, we went and saw all the movies together. Mm -hmm. We went and saw three at first as it first opened. And I remember it being kind of a, you know, when Karate Kid came out, Yep. It was huge. It was everywhere. Oh, yeah. They showed I, it again at our school, like the following year. And I remember the teachers and librarians talking about how it was their favorite movie. Karate yeah. Kid was everywhere. Yeah. And in the, in the 80s, it was Karate Kid, Indiana Jones. Yep. Uh, it was Alien, um, the Aliens with uh, Scorny Weaver. It was Terminator. It was Ferris Bueller's Day Off for me. What's that? It was Ferris Bueller's Day Off for yeah. me. 
Yeah, it was like five movies, yeah. and Karate Kid was in that list of five yeah. that were like the the saga. Everyone saw. Everyone saw, and it produced a sequel, and it produced it produced a couple of sequels. They were sagas. So Karate Kid one comes out; it's humongous. It's the biggest thing on the planet that year. It comes out. Uh, of course, Pat Morita nominated for an Oscar. Everything. Every time you turn on the TV, it was something with Pat Morita and Ralph okay. Macchio, and how great their chemistry was, and all this stuff. And the thing is, Pat Maria was a co comedic actor yeah. before yeah. then. Yeah. And they didn't want him. They didn't want to cast him because they were they're worried he was too too comedic. Yeah. That was his background. He'd been on Happy Days and yeah. that other shows. forgot yeah. what all he'd done before because this yeah. role was so vastly different. Mr. Yeah. Miyagi has a quirky sense of humor where he doesn't really laugh at himself that much. He just makes the joke and moves on. But it's deadpan. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite favorite jokes actually from Mr. Miyagi is in two, where it shows uh, Sato chopping that log, yeah. and he's like, "Oh my gosh, Mr. Miyagi, look at that! Can you can you do that?" He went, "Don't know, never been attacked by a tree." <laughs> yeah, good. Um, and but the thing is though, yeah, he really defined. In fact, that role is so um, uh, is so respected that when Jackie Chan did the reboot. He yeah. said, you may not call me Mr. Miyagi. Give me a different name. I will not be Mr. Yeah. Miyagi. That is he, his character. He is, I mean, that's just, it was one of Jackie Chan's biggest. He, Jackie Chan was one of his biggest fans. Yeah. Well, good for him for doing that too. Yeah. And it's funny that it would end up being Will Smith. That was one of the people that brought the original timeline back of Karate Kid. Because he's as he, as one of the executive producers on Cobra Kai. Oh, really? Yeah. He owns a... I think he owns a part of the Cobra Kai oh. license or brand, but he's the part of he's, Karate Kid. Like, he's yeah, on the, he's on the credits. So Karate Kid Two, of course, comes out because after you know Karate Kid comes out, you know there's going to be a sequel because yep. it's on that level of an Indiana yep. Jones and and a Terminator and all those movies. So it comes out, it gets a sequel. The second movie, also huge, great movie, also gets great reviews. They do something a little different. It works. Mm -hmm. They change the setting. It works. It's not the sequel that you usually get. Which was good because me back in the day as a kid, I hated Karate Kid 2 yeah. because it wasn't back at the tournament because I thought, okay, it's tournament time too. He's going to be, you know, because I was used to the sequel just rehashing the yeah. same story. You're exact, me growing up now, they made a bold choice. Mm -hmm. They made a bold, which was very rare in the 80s back then where you could yeah. just, I mean, oh, yeah. to be honest, Rocky 1, Rocky 2, this the rematch you know that's all they're both good but i'm just saying one's a rematch and that's what you did a lot of times with the sequel you just went back to what you knew yeah and, and they, would, they would oftentimes make the same movie over again yeah. just change a few things back to the future <laughs> pretty much the same movie but they just changed a few things they around but the few the details here and there and yeah. but and I, there's nothing wrong with that but uh, karate kid did get bold they did do something different i didn't like i hated that movie as a kid hated it yeah, you and, didn't like two. You didn't like two back then. You're great with it now. I'm, yeah, I'm great with it now. So then yeah, three I, comes out, and three is more of like the kind of sequel that you would have expected from part two. That's they why do, I loved it as a kid. They do go back to the Cobra Kai increase, and only this time it's a bigger, badder um, site, a henchman that he has that's kind of right. trying to take out Danielson, and and um, it's a lot campier. The movie doesn't get near, nearly as good at reviews, although one of the things that people would still, the critics still said at the time, even if they didn't like the movie or the script or the story as much, they still loved the chemistry between yeah. Ralph Macchio and Pat Morita, and they loved Pat Morita's portrayal as, of Miyagi, award-winning portrayal of Miyagi. But that movie kind of comes and goes a little bit quicker, doesn't yeah. have the fanfare around it. I remember when it came out, by the time it came out in the late 80s, there were almost a three year gap between the movies. So by the time that movie comes out, you're almost a decade separated from the original. And yeah. so the kind of the, the craze of karate kid had kind of died out by that time. Yeah. And people had moved on to whatever new things were already in, were out pretty yeah. woman, I think was, was almost about to come out around that time. There were other bigger, better things at that time than karate kid three. But for me, karate kid three, like wine aged well, because over the years, that movie has gotten a lot of play on television. And a lot of 80s kids that didn't go to the theater when uh, to see Karate Kid 3 when it first came out, I'm sure caught it over the years, either on mm -hmm. DVD or on television. 
And it eventually got the eyeballs that it wanted to get to begin with at the theater over time in TV and movie. Because people that wanted to have get their Karate Kid fix in and wanted new Karate Kid, if you hadn't seen three, that was a great opportunity to get kind of like, sort of like new Karate Kid. So the movie, I think, sort of became a cult popular movie over time. Yeah, I think it did too. I, I think one of the things that, uh, and, I, and I love that they're including it in, by the way, I love it. I remember I didn't watch it in theaters because I, I couldn't, I missed it in theaters. That was the time we moved from Mississippi to Louisiana was that summer it came out. And so we missed the movie. Well, by the time I was, I was with my grandparents and it come out straight, I mean, it come out on video and she, we, we rented it and I could not wait. And I love, I thought it was just a great movie. I remember I went to bed thinking, Oh my gosh, I couldn't wait to tell my brothers that it was better than the first one, I thought. I mean, I really was blown away. And then as as I got older and watched, I was like, oh, okay, this is not as good. But it's still special in my heart because I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. I'm, I am so excited about Terry Silver coming back this season. I, next season, I can't even tell you. Um, yeah. And if the redhead girl comes back too, and the, the bad boy, whatever his name was too, yeah. I, I'll be happy. And they can only come back for one episode, and that's fine. But I, I, Silver must be in every episode. Also, with those flashbacks of John Kreese and Nam that we got in season three, that is ver uh, validating the story, the backstory for Karate Kid 3 when he goes, this man saved my life and Nam, yeah. I yeah. will do anything for him. You know, and so that's what we get to see. How did he save Silver and Nam? And so a lot of this is just, and I love, I love how the writers are respecting all three movies. Now, I say all three movies and we talked mm -hmm. about a reboot. Yeah. But there may have been another one that came out. Oh, I, I don't want to talk about it because okay. I, in my mind, it doesn't exist. It's the only karate kid movie there. You can buy the four pack or the three pack. I bought the three pack on purpose. I've only seen that other movie once. It was so bad. I, I haven't watched it since. You, you never watched it in a long time. And that's the one I've seen the least amount. I will say my memory of it was that what it was the weakest of the four. And it's not because of, of Hillary Swank. Cause I actually liked Hillary Swank in the movie. I thought she was one of the few bright spots where that were her. And, and obviously once again, Pat Morita, but I thought the script, I thought the pacing was weaker. I thought the script was weaker. Uh, I just thought that and I thought the setting wasn't as much fun as sunny California. No. They were, in like Massachusetts for that movie and just didn't have the so I I watched it I saw it when it first came out and then I remember just not feeling as excited about it I thought though Hillary Swank kind of kind of interesting and spunky and and had some personality and, and a look to her that was intriguing and she turns out to be a big star she ends up having a, a pretty good career uh, Oscar um how did that movie come about is there a reason ralph macho didn't ralph macho decline to do a four yeah he had been pitched and he wanted he wanted to stop doing because he didn't think they had come up with a compelling you know well and here here's the thunder take for you it's a good segue for a thunder take because okay. my thunder take question was going to be about a pitch now ralph macho said he got a lot of pitches over the years of ways to bring it back and yeah. he just never heard anything that really was compelling for him it was always sort of like the, the kind of the, they want him. He's got a son now. Yeah. They want him to the Miyagi to his son, who's now being bullied at school and kind of the same story. Yeah. But rehash. Be, it was just going to be a rehash. So he just wasn't interested. But he got one pitch. True story. It was on Movie Web. He did an interview. Uh, this has been a while back now. At one time, there was a pitch to do a. Are you ready for this? Are you sitting down, Matt? Ready. Okay. There was a pitch to Ralph Macchio, a serious pitch to do a Rocky meets the Karate Kid movie. I'd watch that. Yeah, and and a lot of people would have been interested in it. I don't know how that would have uh how would how, how that would have turned out. Was Sylvester Stallone on board? They never mentioned that in the interview. Maybe he was being pitched it. Because he would, yeah, they couldn't do it if they didn't have both Macho and Rocky. Yeah. And Stallone. But Stallone owns Rocky. Yeah, so they don't do that. That's the part of the story that was left out, and I really wish I would have known whether Stallone was on board before Ralph Macchio, and then they were just trying to get Macchio to do it. But he basically told him, hey, you guys get lost. This is 
this is silly. Ridiculous. He said they didn't even have it fully fleshed out. They just had the kind of the, the premise. Oh, was yeah. It, they were going to turn out to be related. And I started thinking about it after I had read that article. And then I dropped, it, I dropped it for a while. But in the first movie, doesn't he have a Rocky poster in his I, in his room? Am I, I making that no, up? No, no, no. I don't think it shows his room. I think it starts with them just exiting the... Uh, uh, oh the, well, I don't know in his uh, I, his new room. I don't know the room that they got in yeah. California. But now that I think about it, they're both Italian. He's from the same area. That actually kind of makes sense now. Wow, yeah. I would have seen that. Well, and anyway, a lot of people probably would have gone for it. It's they never too late. Bring Sly Stallone back as Rocky to come visit him in Cobra Kai. It'll be my favorite episode. Well, that's what's funny is is that you know, and now you know, there's talk about there's been ideas about like whether the show because the show is always I've always heard four seasons for this show I did too but now that they're with Netflix they're talking like seven eight now they're backtracking and you already have pulled from part two you're pulling heavily for obviously your, every the basis of the show pulls from part one uh next season's gonna pull heavily from part three what do you, where do you go after you know four or five seasons and after you take down Terry Silver once and for all and you take down John Kreese once and for all? Where do you go? You have to go somewhere. Maybe finally we get this uh movie that never happened, Rocky Stallone. And of course, I know Stallone said that he's not doing any more Rocky. Oh, that's sad. He said that before, hasn't he? He said that before after after Balboa came out. Yeah, he said it and, before. And then he took a back seat for uh, Creed, but he's the best part of Creed 1 and 2. He's I think the yeah, I agree. Part. I agree. I agree. Uh, he's, and I love such, he's such a seasoned actor. He knows that character. Dolph Lundgren, my wife, watching Creed 2, thought that Dolph Lundgren was at his best. In oh, Creed yeah. Two. Yeah, he was so, like, you emotionally connected. For me, I emotionally connected. Oh, she felt terrible for him when he was at the dinner table and no one, everyone, you know, he was shamed for, yeah. for his loss. So the, the way they wrote his story and what had happened to him was, was, was great. And that was, was the highlight of, that was the highlight of Creed two, which was the, I thought still probably, I don't know. I thought it was the weaker of the two. Did you I, like think Creed? It's, I think it's the weakest of them, them all. Yeah. That's because at this point, I'm just, I have just no interest in Creed's story and it's sad because it's a movie about him but Rocky and Drago steal that scene when he comes into the restaurant to see him. I mean, you're on pins and needles the whole time. And those two actors do a fantastic scene of two old men sitting at a table yeah. throwing veiled threats at each other. It's And it's great. It's a great scene. That's the so, only reason to own Creed 2. So, well, here's my pitch for it. This is the, the Thunder take. Okay. If they run out of stuff for Cobra Kai itself... Maybe a spinoff from this universe. And here's two ideas. Okay. I want to hear what you think about them. Mm -hmm. One is that we got a little bit more backstory on Okinawa and Miyagi. Okay. Miyagi Dojo and the history of the teachings of Miyagi's country and his practice of martial arts. What about a prequel, a Mr. Miyagi prequel that's more of a backstory of the younger Mr. Miyagi back in his country. What do you think about that for a, a prequel series? That That's a rough one because who would play Mr. Miyagi? Prequels usually don't do as well. And I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's an option. Obviously, they'd want to think about things before they do anything. But what story hasn't been told from, I mean, besides him and Sato, that would be a big part of the you show. Could do, you could do yeah. Sato's background. The story That's, of Sato and Miyagi. It, it could be, an, if they were going to do an episode about that, it would have been this season. Um, they've been very respectful with how they've treated Pat Moria's char character, so I don't know if they'd do that. But I will tell you this. Um, where do they go if they're going to do more? Well, obviously in season four, then Cobra Kai must win the tournament next year. So that way it keeps Silver... And right. or maybe silver leaves for good and increase is still around, whatever. But it, it that you got to have that happen because, of you course, want to see can't, you remember the deal that's made at the end. If they lose, it's all betting on the hedging on the tournament now. Okay. 
So yeah. they would have to, Cobra Kai would have to win that tournament. Plus, I would hate it, but I would buy the, <laughs> he is, love that man. Yeah. I, I would hate it, but I would buy the DVD if they say that that other movie, <laughs> can't, can't force myself to say it yet. Mm -hmm. um, if they if they bring that into the can the the canon, it is it is technically Party. I know that yeah I said it was but but I think the reason that that movie sucked was because when you have Ralph Macchio and Pat Moore had this great uh, um, relationship with each other yeah. they really jailed well that they, they had this uh was this dynamic between the two and you can't recreate that with with just bringing in Hillary Swank. She's just, she just doesn't have it. She didn't have that connection, Mr. Miyagi. You have to, you're, you're having to start all over again. And I think that's that synergy between those other two actors. You can't have a karate kid unless you have both. And I think that's why that movie fell flat. She's a great actress though. As a standalone actress, yeah. she's had a tremendous career. What if she came in as, cause as sort of the, because you know, there's going to be some ringers. If Terry Silver's coming back, his mo is let's bring in some ringers for Cobra Kai because these kids aren't going to get it done. These scrawny kids aren't going aren't going to get it done. They're not Cobra Kai material. Even the re replacements this season, still not bad boy Johnny Lawrence level. Right. So I, I think we're gonna see some ringers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ringer we even have the, the the wrestling bully. He may become the head honcho at Cobra Kai. That seems to be what they're doing right now. Uh -huh. But yeah. e even even he, I agree, is not as menacing as you want him to be. Yeah, um, I mean, he, he's a good actor. The kid plays does a good job playing a bully. But I mean, there's not that that bad boy. Like bad boy was pretty menacing in Karate Kid Three. So te so was Terry Silver. Terry Silver is going to come back. He's he's a really tall guy. He's pretty towering. I think he's six six foot five six five. Terry now, Silver actor. Yeah. Now here's the deal though. With Netflix money, they could get Hillary Swank in for one episode maybe she has to come in and help johnny and danielson with even some more backs back some miyagi tricks maybe well, maybe she shows him a trick or or she, you know, bring something from miyagi that miyagi gave her and she wanted daniel to have it or i like the idea about the extra move that she taught him and not daniel that'd be cool too well, but the monks there were the monks in that the next karate kid that was sort of a miyagi uh thing that he had showed her oh you said the name you broke the magic <laughs> yes but i'll be honest if if they do now they ha have never mentioned the next karate kid in any of their interviews they they sure. talked about one two and three and they said yes all that exists in our world and they have always omitted i don't know if it's on purpose or not but they've never talked about the next Karate Kid. Yeah. So either they were never fans or they thought there's no way we can bring Hiller Swank back with YouTube money. Well, now they have a different platform. So now the possibility is there. And now that's probably why they're saying, because I agree with you. I think it was only supposed to be four seasons. Yeah. I think we heard that from Crease when yeah. Crease said they have a four season arc put out and yeah. they had me starring at the end of one. I said, hey, I put me at the beginning of one. They said, no, you need to come in right here. So, yeah, if they want to drag it out, that's fine. And I, obviously, you know, you would probably want to. Now, I can't remember the reboot that well. I only watched that once, but it it, it happens a different time, a different era. If Will Smith, I say I never knew that. I didn't watch the credits. Shame on me. But uh, if Will Smith is involved, if Will Smith's a producer is just a label, right? He's giving them the rights in exchange for that label and not on the set or anything no yeah he's not on the set he just because he has the rights that's one of the in, in the deal they they offered him that label in the end credits but does he get Jaden to come in i mean you think about this how deep do you want to connect these do you want to bring in mr han jackie chan who is back who is still around and and and, and maybe he was a friend of miyagi back in the day you know, and you could you could do that. I mean, seriously, sky's the limit now that you have Netflix money. Because Jackie Chan, I, I'm a huge Jackie Chan fan, even though I'm not a big fan of that reboot I, because I the old ones were so mean so much to me. But it's a possibility. 
it's a possibility to get his kid in there who hasn't been doing much, I don't think. And it's a possibility to bring Jackie Chan in there. So, I mean, we're here trying to talk about what beyond four, what could you have? How you Next Karate four? Kid, the reboot movie. I mean, just tie it all in. You start to pull from that. And these guys are pretty talented. Let's face it. I mean, these guys are, are extremely, extremely crafty. Yes. They have crafted the best sequel series, I think, in the I history know. of sequel series. Absolutely. From, from the nostalgic 80s. And by the way, even though now this has gotten bigger and it's on a bigger scale because it's on Netflix, you do start to get the haters. The more famous you get, the more likely you are. You're going to get really famous. You're going to get really more popular, popular but there's also going to be haters. And I know I have a few of my friends, cousins. They have wives that they've made fun of the show. They think, oh, it's a bunch of old men doing karate and they have to do slow motion. As one of the comments I heard, you know who you are that said it. it said it's a bunch of old men doing karate in slow motion. And I, they were talking about Crease, I'm sure, but they could have also been talking about um, Danielson and, and Johnny. I don't, I don't know. But that was one of the critiques I heard. Bad acting. Someone commented, which I, I say fake news. There's no, yeah. I don't think I haven't seen bad acting. I think they've all done a good, good job. I'll, I'll be honest. I've seen weak, weak characters. Um, I've never been a fan of Robbie um, yeah. here. And we did found that out. Did that continue for you in the season. I'm sorry. Did that continue for you with Robbie in terms of him being your least favorite character in this season. Was he still your least favorite? It's hard to tell because he was hardly in it this season and he's not as bad. Uh, but you notice he has brown hair. He dyed his hair and cut it. And that's because yeah. he was in, he filmed another movie. Okay. I didn't know that. Had. Same haircut. That's why he had it. My wife figured that one out while we were watching it. Yeah. And um, well, what we what she says, what we think is what it was that he had to film that movie, and that's why he had to have the change like that. Okay. And that's why he wasn't in it as much either. Okay, um, interesting. But I, I I also have to add someone to the list. Um, Daniel's daughter, not interesting to me. It's and maybe, maybe that's just because there are so many other things going on. That you know, at the same time, that her storyline was the weakest of them all. Well, and I her she was diminished a little bit too in in time on screen this season. I didn't think we saw as much of her. Where it seemed like she was used a lot more in the first two seasons. She may have been. I don't. I don't know. As screen time goes, you may be right. But the thing is, though, the stuff they did with her just wasn't. It wasn't interesting. And then some of it just outright was like, oh, come on, Miguel now again. You just got over Robbie. Now you're going after Miguel. But yeah. then my buddy, rightfully so, said, Matt, these kids are in high school. Do you remember high school? Yes. You ch That's exactly how I, if, if people want to complain like, oh, come on. She's with Miguel. And then Miguel freaks out, gets kind of loses his mind. So she goes with Robbie. Well, then M Robbie freaks out, loses his mind. And then she goes back to Miguel. Well, they're just rehashing the story. Well, basically, folks, that's high school. Yeah. That's high school. And and my buddy was right. And I was like, okay, you're right. Because I was getting all fear. I was like, oh, come on. They're just flipping the script. You know, they're just flipping. The, they don't know how to write these kids. They're just flipping the script. Oh, now he's the one. Robbie's the one with the big head and the bad, wrong idea. He catches them together, just like Miguel caught Robbie and that girl together earlier. But no, it's, it's high school. That stuff happens. So I... For that reason, for that reason, I let it go. For but me, I, uh, young actors, it. the new, the younger actors, um, that Diaz has continued to be the strongest in terms of his his role in the show. Oh man, he is just uh, Miguel. I absolutely love, and he was in my favorite scene from this season. Now, my favorite scene, I'll tell you about. Okay, well, the funniest scene in the whole show for me, and there's been a lot of them. And one of my favorite scenes, and it's been turned into a gift now, mm -hmm. is Danielson when he kicks the cup out of his rival dealership's hand <laughs> in the in the that that scene. I still go back and watch it whenever I can find it and go back and watch it when yeah. he kicks the cup out of his hand. This is Tom. What's the guy's name? Tom. Tom, Tom Cole. Tom Cole. He kicks the, the the cup out of Tom Cole's hand. That scene for me is still one of my favorite scenes. This year, though, this season, the funniest scene and one of my favorite scenes is when uh, Johnny, this was Johnny and Miguel this time, when Johnny has the magazines. I think yeah. it was the, the ladies of 19, the hottest ladies of 1989 or whatever it was. Man of White, 1982. Yeah, he, he has a, a 
group and he's dropping it down for Miguel and to try to help Miguel get motivated and try to find the strength and the, to stand up and walk. And, and Miguel is like, well, great. I mean, I could look at these up, look these up on my phone. If I, yeah, if I want yeah. to, I, mean, sure, the, okay. I like, I love one of my funniest scenes with, was with chosen chose yeah. on when they're, when they're meeting for the first time and they're sitting at the table. Do you drink? No. He's just sitting there all grouchy. I mean, it's just a, he's like, well, I'm going to go get into No, I get it. You know, he gets up and you're like, oh, man, that's great. That is so great. It was I great. love every minute of that. Those were a couple of my favorite episodes, too. You had mentioned that that was part of your favorites uh, this season was that. Because it was also something a little different because we hadn't gotten that in the first two seasons, uh, those characters and then coming back. And again, they paid so much respect to those characters and their story, how they continued on. I do have a complaint though. What's oh. that? He, his his girlfriend, what's her name from Karate Kid 2? She comes back. Kuniko. 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 So let me get something clear. Kuniko left Danielson. Yes, to go da to her dancing career. For her dancing career, but she, for me, it looks like she left him to go work in a shopping center. Well, okay, she, I know, I know that's not all she did. I, think she was teaching those kids to she dance teach those kids it's, it's, and, it's, and we it's, did hear when they were sitting down we did hear that she's been all around the world that she yeah. did have a, she had a successful career as a dancer london was her favorite place to go she never got married because no one has ever fought to the death for her before you can't top that that was another funny one too um, i think i think if danielson wasn't married i think they might have got they, those two might have still had chemistry yeah, I, if if Daniel wasn't married, I would have gone for the Daniel Alley connection, mm -hmm. personally. Yeah. But Kuniko is fine. Yeah, they still had some chemistry there. But anyway, her character really played a, a really important role. Um, obviously, getting Martin Cove back for this show has been really important uh, as John right. Kreese. I don't know how they would have done it without him. Now, yeah. Martin Cove, I read a really interesting article with him the other day. Did you know he was in a movie recently? A big movie, one of the biggest movies to come out in the last like three or four years. He has a big scene oh. in this. Once upon a time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino. He plays a sheriff. I watched that. I don't even recall that. The sheriff in the scene where they're in a western. Wow. Okay. So there's a big story behind that. An article with Martin Cove where he said that he had he had met. He was a member of the uh, Screen Actors Guild. He's like on the board, Martin Cove. Oh, wow. He goes to a lot of screenings. He goes to a lot of meetings. He goes to a lot of mixers. Now they're probably all on Zoom because of COVID. But he goes <laughs> to these meetings. He meets, he rubs elbows with some of Hollywood's uh, A-list. Uh, yeah, finest. He went to a screening for something that was part of the, the members of Screen, Screen Actors Guild. Quentin Tarantino's there. And Brad Pitt's there. Quentin Tarantino, Martin Coe gets up to ask a question. And it's Quentin Tarantino who's on the panel. He's up there talking. Yeah. And when Martin Cove gets up, Quentin Tarantino, Quentin Tarantino says, uh, Martin Cove, you're one of my favorite actors. Shut up. You were in a movie, and he mentioned a movie, something fire something that he's in. is a lesser known movie. And then he said, you played a role in that movie and it blew me away. It's one of my favorite roles that I've seen, you know, of an actor in. And I said, I love it. I just want you to know that. And you're one of my favorite actors. So uh, the same time he's there, Brad Pitt pulls him aside and says, I want you to know that my, I play, just for my six-year-old, we just watched Karate Kid and he, you're his hero. You're going to be his hero if he ever sees you. Shut up. He, own way that I'm talking to you right now. That we loved it, by the way. We all enjoyed it when we watched it. So Martin Cove said after he left that day, he got in his he was with his girlfriend. He got in his convertible. He lit up his cigar and he said he felt like he was on top of the world. Oh yeah, when you hear that, You're hearing that from two of top uh, two of the top guys in Hollywood. But he did get exchange information with Quentin Tarantino at that mixer because he said, you know what? He told Quentin, I want to work with you. I want to do a western with you. So Quentin got his uh, number, and he got Quentin's number. Quentin wrote his number on it down. Long story short, Quentin scribbled his number, and he couldn't read it when he tried to call him. Oh, no. So he, he went on for weeks, months, 
not being able. So finally, he decided he looked up and found Quentin Tarantino's office. He called. He got a secretary and said, yeah, I tried to get hold of Quentin, but the number he gave me is scratched and I can't read it. So he, she said she'd pass the message on. Quentin finally calls him out of the blue one day and says, yeah, what's going on? What happened? He said, well, you had, you know, so any long story short, he got Quentin's proper number. And then Quentin says, well, you know, we'll do lunch sometime. That kind of whole, whole Hollywood thing. And Martin says, you never know when people are serious and when they're bullshitting you in Hollywood when they tell you that. And then finally out of the blue one day, Quentin reached out to him and cast him in a role in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood in the scene where he's uh, in a West part of the Western where they're filming a Western movie with DiCaprio's character. He's playing that the legendary actor in the movie. So wow. in that, so here's the cool thing. Martin Cove has a hoster gun hoster that was given to him by Sammy Davis jr. Shut up. It has Sammy Davis jr's initials on it. And it was a real small cause Sammy Davis jr is really small. Yeah. So it was, it was custom for his waist. How, and how did he get that? They were working together on some show, I think a Western. They were working together on some show, and he was on. And and uh, because Martin Cove had been on Guns Bonanza, a couple of Westerns in his early act, early days of his acting career, he guested it on a couple of those Westerns. So he's on something with Sammy Davis Jr. as a Western. And after they're done filming, they're in a trailer, and Sammy Davis Jr. gave him his holster with his initials on it that had Sammy Davis Jr.'s initials on it. Cove kept it in a case for years. After they're done filming Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, um, see, Cove said I could never wear it because it was too small for my waist. Right. Obviously, yeah. I couldn't wear it. So I just had to keep it in a case and never got to use it. Mm -hmm. So he decided finally, uh, after filming Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he gifted it to Quentin Tarantino and he was blown away by it. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So there's like that thing. Now, I've, I'm like you, I've got to go back and watch that sometime. And see that because I, I, yeah, I totally, missed that. I totally missed that. I know people look different as they age, but it's so weird because I probably would have seen that. Some of those, some of those are iconic actors, you think I would have seen that kind of out of context of his, you know, seeing him in, in a different setting and probably not having seen him in a while. Probably didn't like so. kind of process. Oh, the other funny thing is he had asked Tarantino, he said, Is the reason why you finally got me in a movie was because I'm hot again because I'm on Cobra Kai? Or is it because I wouldn't I wouldn't stop bothering you? I kept pestering you because <laughs> he did. He kept calling him. And he, every time he saw him somewhere, he would ask him, hey, I still want to work with you. And he said, actually, both. Oh, he right. Said, it's Quentin Tarantino was not one to like BS around. And he said, yeah, it was a little bit of both because you're hot again and because you've been bucking me. But he, he they kind of had a laugh over it. Oh, wow. That's awesome, though. So that's kind of cool. Awesome. That, that's that cool. is cool. That is a cool story. Yeah, uh, they could push forward too with some of the, the young characters and their story as they go into college, and that could provide another new material. Yeah, I, I, I love, like I said, I love Miguel. Um, everyone else is okay. Oh no, no, no! I love Hawk too. I love Hawk good. too. Hawk's good. I also enjoyed uh, Dimitri, especially this season. I like Dimitri. Dimitri like season. Yeah, yeah. Now one that was missing, and she's just a one-off like two word two sentence write off was Aisha. Yeah. Which I found interesting. I think I know why. I heard different stories. I heard one that she had health issues and she just couldn't do it this year. And I've also heard even blurbs of like there was some other stuff behind the scenes. I don't know. Yeah, they, they well that they didn't have a story for her. I I think it was that they were they wanted her to go against Daniel's um uh, daughter, but they found out that that rivalry just wasn't hitting that spark they needed. And so they brought in Tori in season two just to see how that worked. And it looked like it worked well. They liked their dynamic better. So then Aisha's out because now there doesn't need to be friction between Aisha and Daniel's daughter. I can't think of her name right now on the show. My wife was like, Tori is scary. Yeah, Tori, Tori. Tori was Tori. Intimidating, intimidating my wife. And she's not even in the movie or in the show. <laughs> we get out scary. She's scary. Yeah, we, we get a little background on Tori too. We should also mention that too, well, which is interesting. Held to follow John Kreese. We're given us that is introduced in the story as well this season. Why she is compelled to show some loyalty towards Kreese and really ramp up her her loyalty for him this year. Yeah, how he 
stands up, stands up for her. And we also can also figure out if you know Karate Kid 3, you know it well enough in the history of Silver, and then we see the backstory with Silver and Crease. We know why Crease has no trouble with money, unlike Johnny, who has had trouble with money all through the three seasons and being able to get yeah. back his feet up, his feet on the ground. Where with Crease, he's had this kind of a money machine named named Terry Silver. Which how ironic is his last that his last name is Silver, by the way. Oh, it's great. It's great. Great, great. Provide the coin for for yeah. For really season. awesome. We find out that he's been providing, he's basically funded the original Cobra Kai. I'm sure he's probably funding the the rebooted Cobra Kai with John Kreese. Now behind the scenes, he's been funding him. And well, I don't know because obviously Kreese has been in a homeless shelter. Kreese is a very proud man. He doesn't ask uh, for help. Yeah. That's yeah. why he goes when in three, when he goes to uh, Silver, it's not he's bragging. He's like, hey, I just I've fallen on hard times. I need help. Well, so Terry helps him. And then they they both, you know, Cobra Kai falls. Well, now he doesn't want to go to him. But right now, right now, Crease is on top. He yeah. think, at least he thinks so. He's on top of the world. Things are going great for him. And so maybe now he's got more confidence to call Terry Silver. And of course, he needs an extra hand. All that makes sense. I can't wait. I cannot wait to see what they do with it. Do you think that, you know, they did a, they did a bait and switch with us this year. So they're not, it's, they're not beyond kind of doing a, a, um, a writer's ploy of making kind of making people think one thing and then turning around and doing another, the whole alley thing all through between the seasons two and three, there was speculation all over the web that, cause we knew already that she was a surgeon. Mm -hmm. And there was speculation, of course, all over YouTube that she was going to be Miguel's surgeon in season three. Right. And then they even tricked us because there's that shot of a woman from behind and that was his surgeon. That they brought in. It was a big surgeon that they had to they raised money for her to pay for her to come in and do the surgery because she's one of the best. And they showed her from the back. And who does she look like from the back other than Elizabeth Shue? Yeah, like Alex, same hair color, everything. Yep. They did that to obviously trick us, and we did get Allie eventually. But we thought we were going to get her as actual surgeon uh, on Miguel, and they so they tricked us there. So let me ask you this: Do you think there's a chance? Maybe they tricked us at the in the finale because we know they're going to get Terry Silver. Terry Silver's coming back, but. Mm -hmm. We don't know how much we with that part. We don't know. We don't know if we're going to get him a lot or if we're going to get him in the end of the season or if we're going to just little bits here and there or if he's just going to be a big part of the show. I'm like you. I'd like to see a lot of them causing havoc next year. But is there a chance that that may have been a, a bait and switch, though? That wasn't even who he was talking to on the phone. It could be. But my wife wants to answer this question. OK, I don't know. I'd love to hear. I don't know. If I can do you do want to get camera. on camera? No, I don't want to get on camera. Okay. I just want to answer it off camera. I've been sitting here so quietly. Come up here. Trying not to, to she... say too much. Um, but I, I do want to answer this question. I feel like the reason they did that at the end of season two was because they were unsure if Elizabeth Shue was going to be able to come back. So they wrote it because they could play it off either way. So if she came back, that could be an in to get her in, or that right. could be an out in case she said no. Yeah. Let me tell you in, in there now they heard your voice and they're crying. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. so here's here's the deal. Here's the deal. The missus, when she watches a show, it's usually like this. Mm -hmm. Or it's like this. Well, and I have shows that I watch like that. If there's shows that I'm just sort of medium interested in, yeah. Or or, 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 or it's the combo. Okay, sleep at the phone. But when it was Cobra Kai, oh. she was phoned down, locked in every episode. That it's very rare that that happens. So Cobra Kai is a good show for. In fact, we were up late that first night, and we were ready. I could have gone all night and watched all ten episodes, yeah. but she kept. She had us go six episodes before she finally said, "Okay, I'm tired now." I was like, "Okay," but it was yeah. way past bedtime by that time. But she was enjoying the show. Yeah, I'm kind of like that too. I, 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 and, and there's some show, but there's five shows like that for me where I'm locked in. This is one of them. Uh, for me, The Mandalorian is obviously there, but I can, I'll be honest, I watched Star Trek Discovery 
And that's one that I can go, I can kind of watch for 15 minutes and then pause it and then go do something. And then, yeah, not a fan. <laughs> I'm not a fan of I think discovery is a slap in the face to any star Trek fan out there. Um, Picard, I have a lot of issues with, but I'm going to watch the second season. I love Picard. Now, I think Picard's the best new Star Trek that we've had in quite a well, while. Okay. I'll take, well, that's because we have Discovery. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. But I will, I won't, I won't. I'm not supposed to venture off the topic here too much. Yeah. Mrs. Lexus talking about Cobra Kai here. All yeah. right. So we, can just, do, we, we can do, we can weigh in on Star Trek sometime. We can weigh on Star Trek sometime, but Picard, the, the real big thing I had about it was that I know they want to make it just about him. They didn't want to bring back the whole cast and have another Next Generation show. Yeah. But why did you give me a storyline where you really should have brought in the original cast? Yeah. And they would have want to have helped uh, data. Uh, data. Uh, it it doesn't make sense. that. And then I thought they kind of cheapened Data's death. Because mm -hmm. Nemesis was, it wasn't the Nemesis in the best next generation movie by far, but that uh, Data's death was done right. Mm -hmm. So why redo that? It cheapens the death. So there's a lot of, I, again, I'm, I'll back away from it. Like I said, I'm still watching season two. I'm yeah. still watching season two of Picard. I'm still in. Oh, but yeah, I just felt like okay. if you were going to do a story without them, don't give me a storyline where it what makes sense to bring them all in. Uh, oh, by the way, and this is so wrong. Fry TV now said she wants him to take the trash out <laughs> off camera. Your wife is calling for you. <laughs> well, maybe that too, but probably would we'll, we'll be fine with doing it after the show's over, after we're done right. with. I don't know. I've, I've already, already had trash day yesterday, so I've already done that, and I've gotten I brought it back in. So that's I'm already I'm already in the clear there. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, we got some more. We'll we'll bring up here in a, uh, as we close out the show. Any final thoughts uh, on? Season three, I loved it myself. Good. Yeah, uh, it delivered. It was a little more over the top than the, the previous seasons, but I'm fine with it. Uh, with the over the topness, I think the cleverness and the writing continued. I do worry about them going too long on the show now that they're at Netflix and there's going to be pressure for them to do more seasons. I would be fine with five or six. I don't know about seven or eight seasons, even though well, I do love Netflix shows. Don't really go that long either. No, typically not. Very few Stranger Things would be an exception that's been kind of ongoing for a while. Uh, they can't. And the thing is, I don't want this show to be uh, extended and then only to be canceled later without a yeah. proper finale, which is what they've done on some Netflix shows. I'll give you an example. Uh, Glow, obviously not nearly as popular of a show, but uh, they they had a they left that off. They had renewed it for a year, year more. But then they backtracked and they canceled it before they had a chance to shoot the the, fi the final season. Mm. So Netflix is notorious for doing things like that. And that worries me a little bit about them being on Netflix uh, is that they decided to keep doing season after season. And then they get to like season six or seven and then not give it a final closure. True. I wouldn't be happy about that, but maybe they would have they would have people pretty upset. They wouldn't be able to maybe they wouldn't be able to get away with it with a sh with a show this popular. True. They would people would be basically pretty pretty mad pretty mad oh, about yeah. it. oh oh yes love absolutely it. love it any final thoughts uh i give it uh five thunderbolts again and i and the haters can hate it's number one on netflix and it's the biggest thing on the planet right now and yes it it's is fun it's it's a great escapism which is what we need in the world right now we need something fun. We need something that takes you back to a simpler time, but also brings in something for, and it's something that the dads can watch with their sons. Mm -hmm. The sons that are in junior high, high school now are watching it with their dads. And there's not a lot of content where that, that appeals to that 40 year span of age range. So anyway, I love it. But what do you think? I, I, I got to say uh, ditto to everything you just said. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to see where season four goes. I'm really excited about season four. And if they do go ex extra episodes, they need to tread carefully unless they want to bring in next karate kid and the reboot. That'd be interesting. I'd see that. And then I'd be happy to let it go, but they do need to, they do need to make sure they give it a strong ending. But what, from what we've seen from the TV series so far, I trust them to bring in a solid ending. I got another one. Uh, of our spinoff idea earlier, I was going to mention is that if they brought back and did more of the animated series of an animated series that takes place in the uh, earlier. No, that's wild that you mentioned that where they look for the magic shrine. 
they did another season oh, of that. Holy cow. I totally forgot about that series yeah, until you that. just said it. Especially now, because they're so it's so popular. It's it's really in, in people's minds. If they plug that in between seasons, I think there would be a lot of interest in that and watching that and is bringing that, it. Is that streaming? It probably somewhere. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Can you get it on DVD? Do you have a DVD of that? I, I, I don't, but I've never actually looked for it either. That was a long time ago. The original Cry Kid animated series. They only ran for one season, right? Maybe two. I mean, I'd have to look it up here, but yeah, that, that was wild that you brought that one up. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. We're going to roll. We're going to roll out the agree. Disagree. Yep. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Number one. Okay. Chris Pratt guardians, of the galaxy yes. Jurassic world yes. talked recently how he said, you know, I got in a habit since I've been doing guardians of the galaxy movies of mouthing to the sound effects, the pew, 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 pew. <laughs> they, when they filmed the last Jedi, I know they had an actress on that movie and she's, she's actually, they had a editing mishap where you could see her. If you read her lips, she's doing she's that. Pew, pew, pew. She's mouthing the pew, pew, pew. And they didn't catch that. That's where, you know, the director. So what I want to ask you is the pew, 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 pew. Is that a is there a rampant problem in Hollywood? Do they need to address this properly? Do you agree or disagree based on what I'm telling you? The, the big, making sound effects? Making the actors making the sound effects with the, the pew pew pew. Do they need to figure out some way to like CGI their lips again or just to figure out a way yeah, to they need they need to train the actor or actress to stop? I mean, it's funny when you see it. It's yeah. funny when you see it. If there was, if it was a big problem, we'd be talking more about it. But if, if, if you remember, I don't know if you know this, there's a rumor or it's always been legend that Han Solo in Empire Strikes Back, when Leia falls into his arms in the, in the um, uh, space slug scene where it kind of rocks me and they fall into his, and she's like, Captain being held by you can heart is hardly enough to get me excited. His lips are moving. It's almost like he's kind of mouthing out her line so he can say his next. And it's, it's almost like, did he do that? Was that, and I don't know if anyone's ever asked him that, but it's been the whole rumor. Cause you do see his lips move a little bit and he's just mouthing out words. I think he's mouthing out her line to remember, oh gosh, what comes next for me? And I wonder if that was a take. That's fun to see that when that happens every once in a while, but no, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. I would like to see a t-shirt made with a pew, pew, pew. And then I just, okay, here goes. Maybe in the Thunder Pop shop. When we when we start when I start my store that I'm working on hey, it. There you go. Awesome. Okay. Someone's probably done it though. Okay. Number two. Last question in the greatest degree today. Um talked about this earlier. David Spade has been saying that doing movies, comedy movies now on Netflix is probably better than doing them for theatrical release. Cause he said, you know, I can get them in front of more eyeballs. I put out you know, he gave an example of uh, the movie, the Adam Sandler movie, Grown Ups, that he's in. Yes. He said we made well, we made 160 million dollars. Tickets are 16 dollars a piece, but you track that, it's probably about 10 million people that saw that in the theater. He said I put out a movie on Netflix. He was given his example of his movie that he came out with recently, Wrong Missy, came out last year, I believe. Wrong Missy, he says, probably about 59 million views in the first month on Netflix. So if you're an actor that wants to be seen in your comedy movies by a large audience, am I better off releasing them on Netflix than doing the theater? Agree or disagree with David Spade? That, that's, a, that, that's, a, that's a strong argument for streaming uh, right now. As you've talked about in uh, previous uh, Th Thunderpop podcasts before, the movie theaters are in trouble right now. They're having to scramble to stay alive uh, through all this craziness. And movie studios are going to look and see where if it's if it's more advantageous right now i don't think it is advantageous to do streaming because we, we're not seeing mass move we, besides the wb we're not really seeing anyone else making that move oops sorry but um so it, it's still up for grabs but for actors for directors that streaming gives you a, a different different type of audience but it also gives you a way to different tell different storylines 
gone are the days where you're going to see this big, you know, two hour, three hour movie. You can have it every once in a while, but telling us a, uh, a um, story through it, uh, episodic, you know, just eight episodes or TV. Show. I'm watching Queen's Gambit right now. It's only eight episodes or something like that. And it plays like a movie. It's a, it's amazing. Yeah. So I think that's what you're going to see. And I, I agree with David Spade. I think that's one. Why would he go do a movie again? And if he can do this and if it's better for him and each, each actor is going to have to make up their own mind what they want to do. But even putting out a streaming movie these, these days, it's not, you know, it's not like, Oh, this couldn't, this couldn't make it into the big screens. In fact, if I was Netflix, I'd be throwing all of my movies out on big screens just for the extra money. Yeah. You know, why not? There's nothing coming out right now. Why not? I don't even understand why you wouldn't put coming to coming to America is going to go just to streaming on prime. Well, why wouldn't you give that a theatrical run for at least a month just to put it out for people that still would go do the prime as well. But I don't understand. They did that. I don't understand why you would just do streaming with coming to America. Even, you know, if theaters are screens open. I, I completely agree. But that's the deal they made. I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. Okay. And the yeah. thoughts and advice to close it out more Cobra Kai stuff. And I know there's a lot going on in the world. We're not insensitive to, I mean, it, it's been, it's crazy times. Right. We're in a pandemic. I mean, there's people, I mean, I don't have to, I don't have to speak on, I know there's, there's some yeah. actually crazy, depressing stuff going on in the news. Um, but I'll say this. That's why you need people like us here that can give you sort of a, an hour or 30 minutes where we can sit around and we can talk about something else to kind of take our minds off of it. Yeah. That's what entertainment is for those things or, um, you know, or pretend like it's not happening. We just, you know, there's, and we're, and we're, this is what we do. Well, I mean, there's people that can do a better job of discussing those things, the harder topics. Um, yeah. we can sure as hell talk some Cobra Kai for you. There you go. And this guy, board games, you can find him on YouTube, yeah. board games, the expanded universe. They'll talk to you about it. Are we going to get some expanded universe back in Star Wars? Because it seems like they're loosening up a little bit, the, the handcuffs. Well, I don't know. I mean, I know everyone's been excited lately with some of the news and some of the stuff that they've taken from the books and put into their yeah. new stuff. In fact, um, someone was saying to me the other day where they just, uh, it's obvious they're reading comp books and looking over books now because they're using that to really, there's a lot more in the Mandalorian supposedly from the expanded universe than even I knew. And I mean, lifted page for page too. Yeah. Star Wars expanded universe, by the way. Yeah. Star Wars expanded universe, excuse me, Star Wars expanded universe. And so I was like, okay, well that, that, that's interesting. Um, I know some people are getting excited. I would love to see them. It's now titled legends. But I would love to see more legend stories. I would love to see that. I, and of course, more Star Wars, whether it's dealing with the the current storyline, the canon, meaning the the movies and the TV shows, or it's legends, which is this, this alternate storyline, which I love better. This is what made me a Star Wars, makes me a big Star Wars fan. Either way, I think it'd be, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to see what's going to happen. And, you know, as always, I'm hopeful. Will you watch if new legend stuff is produced, uh, either in live action or animation? We will, will you watch it? Yeah, if it connects to all this, sure I will. But I don't think they'll go that far. But what I think they could do is they could start doing all the stories in this universe again, okay. and just kind of provide just more an, an outlet for more fans because there's definitely a market for it. There's definitely a market for it out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You've 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 proven that time and time again. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, another thing that there may be a market for, we don't know for sure, but another thing we didn't really touch on in this uh, this Cobra Kai Season 3 reaction was the Eagle Fang, Eagle Fang Karate, which was Johnny's upstart dojo after he disbands from the Cobra Kai. And I tried it. Eagle Fang never dies. Eagle Fang never dies. It just doesn't work the same. Doesn't, doesn't work. work. Fang never Eagle dies, but Fang never flies. Now that maybe Eagle Fang forever. Eagle Fang lives. Oh, e e Eagle Fang forever sounds good. Fang forever could work, but I know uh, they have Eagle Fang merch. This is a pro tip. You, my thoughts and advice for you, if you're interested in some Eagle Fang merch, gotta pick have, it up, folks. Have it on the Cobra Kai store. 
In fact, oh. it's on the homepage when you first open up Cobra Kai shop. Uh, it's there. And let me go uh, take the um, take the graphics down so we can see a little bit better. Okay. There, yeah, there it is. The Eagle Fang Karate. The store, <laughs> store is great, by the way. And if you're looking for merch, I mean, they got, but here you got the Eagle Fang Karate hoodie. They mm -hmm. have an Eagle Fang uh, blanket. Well, that's Cobra Kai blanket. But they, have the Eagle Fang so they got a lot of Eagle Fang. You can just click on the Eagle Fang and it'll take you to all the Eagle Fang uh, merch the Eagle they Fang. have there. But the moment we saw he revealed those shirts yeah. in that episode, we started laughing. I said, I bet they're for sale right now. We checked and sure enough, I saw it on the website. Yeah, I, I went over right away too, and I was like, "Oh my god, they have it! They have the merch." And you were waiting for that, weren't you? Because you thought, "Well, they may, we may get a new name of a new, we may get a new dojo in season three. and we did. Yeah. It was a joke, but I'm happy we got it. That was so much fun. Because fan if, cry. Yeah, if, if if Johnny has to come up with something, it's going to be something like that. You know, it will be, and you know, the writers had a fun time probably coming up with that name too. Somebody had mentioned to me that he should have went for it was one of his faces it's his favorite movie was iron fist or was it iron oh 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 yeah um that was it iron i can't remember but yeah you're right he says it in the first um first season i can't well, we, may still, we may still get another and it's genius too because now they got another merch that they could sell to fans of other course. Than they have Miyoga Do. And now they've got that Eagle Fang. It's kind of a joke, but people kind of get a kick out. I I want an Eagle Fang shirt. I totally want an Eagle Fang shirt. Yeah. Oh, that'd so be it's awesome. Ridiculous, but I want a shirt. I want a shirt. I will, I will before the end of this year own a shirt. Eagle you know, Fang. true fans will know everybody knows Cobra Kai, but true fans are gonna know when you see the Eagle Fang. When you and see they Eagle like Fang, you're like, in no. They're like, you got it, you got it. Oh man. <laughs> hey Matt Wilkins, you can find him on YouTube at Pretty easy, Matt Wilkins. Just put it in the search bar, and you'll find. If you see this guy's face, you are in the right place. He's there. He puts there up new podcast, <laughs> some new content all the time. I don't know how he finds time, but he does it. He's a madman. I think he cloned himself. I'm telling you, <laughs> to, to, to parody, got, it's triplets. It's triplets of me. Yeah, he's got triplets of himself. It's the Michael Keaton movie that they made a multiplicity movie. Well, he's That's right. He's multiplicity. Movie. Think multiplicity. Yeah. Yeah, in fact, when I'm sitting in this chair and I just say, I want pizza over and over again, you'll know. I've gone too far. <laughs> yeah, I'm too far. Uh, oh, we have a few people I wanted to bring in. Hit some comments before we close out. Yeah. Uh, we had also Maureen agrees that Tori has issues. Tori does have his issues. And by the way, I worry that if there's any character that's not going to make it out of this series alive, I think the one I think I worry about the most is Robbie at this juncture. I could see things oh. going and Robbie not making it out on this series alive. Okay. Wow. Think, Bold call. A prediction. I, I think that Robbie may end up dying. Something's going to happen, uh, mishap, and it's going to be because of Cobra Kai and John Kreese and Terry Silver. And mm -hmm. it probably, probably next season. So, yeah. or if not the season following, but I think in either four or five, I predict something's going to happen to Robbie. So you got it right here. We have proof. Wow. Look at that. We told you spoilers, folks. Uh, Maureen Joseph says, Kreese knows how to play everybody. He'll, the guy is. I agree with that. Tactical. Like we see that he is slick as he can be. Um, and uh, yeah, he absolutely, he's, he's really crafty, but yeah, the, the havoc that silver could cause next year because he's a billionaire with his toxic waste empire and his spa his spa a line of, of uh, hot tubs that he's sold and made so much money on over the years. Uh, I think that he and also hair grease. I think that he, uh, his hair grease line, I think that he could cause so much havoc for Danielson and Johnny next year, which is going to be a big part of what happens next season. Huge. Probably take down Danielson's dealership, which he'll come back from, but he'll probably could take. Danielson could end up out on the streets uh, back in his old apartment with his wife because of, because of Terry silver, because of his power mm -hmm. and, influence and his conniving connivingness. Terry silver could cause a lot of damage to Danielson next season, just to try to disarm him a little bit to disarm him. And 
You know what probably happens? I'll tell you what probably happens. They end up losing their business. And as a result, they have to move out of their mansion or their house. And they end up having to move back into Miyagi's old house. That's another prediction. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. You know, that, that's, that, that's an interesting one. Silver takes his business down. Uh, Johnny's already kind of down and out, but there's still havoc he could cause for, for Johnny. Also, we all want to see the fight between Johnny and Crease and Danielson and Terry Silver and Bad Boy. We want to see that showdown, don't we? Next oh. year. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I want to see all that. Like I said, I want to see Silver throughout the entire season three. Yeah. So I think we're going to we're going to get a lot yeah. of havoc from Silver next year. It's going to be Pat great. Wilkins, Wilkins, I want to thank you so much. Those of you out there, I want to thank you that joined us for this episode of 137 episode. I had to look to remember, remember. episode 137. Everyone have a good night. Good day. Hour second. Millisecond. Good night. Good day. Good be, safe. be safe. Peace on earth. Um, hope, for, hope for everything to, you know, the light to shine on the world and um, get us out of this pandemic. And um, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Wilkins, thank you so much, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Always fun. Everyone have a good night. Good night everyone. Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.